Welcome back to Law Hero and this evening we are finally getting around to discussing Gemma O'Doherty and uh, John Waters case uh, against the Minister for Health, the Attorney General with the Dáil, Shannad and Ceann Corla as notice parties and I have um, really wanted to review this judgment simply because I'm very curious uh, to see what arguments uh, were made on both sides, so both from the applicant and respondents. This is judicial review, by the way. So I am reading from the judgment of Mr. Justice Meenan, um, which was delivered on the 13th of May 2020. And I'm just going to make some comments around uh, some parts of the judgment. The judicial review was to challenge the constitutionality of legislations and regulations enacted to prevent the spread of coronavirus in Ireland, COVID-19 Act 2020 was enacted. There was also a rake of statutory instruments like, you know, around the restrictions of movement and whatnot. There was a lot of law um, brought in. So in a judicial review case, the burden is on the applicant to dispose such facts in his or her grounding affidavit, which if proven could make an arguable case in law that has a prospect of success. So that is the um, threshold here to be reached by the applicants, John and Gemma. Number two is locus standi, i.e. from Cahill v Sutton, that the applicants have a sufficient interest in the matter to which the application relates. So the claim of unconstitutionality is here. They say that the COVID regulations are not only repugnant to the constitution, but furthermore are wholly disproportionate to the incident and effect of COVID-19. For example, constricting the movement of person with no legal or clinical justification or cause and with no evidence being presented to the public that such measures have ever succeeded in any comparable situation in achieving the stated purpose of government and with no state of emergency emergency being formally declared by the House of Oireachtas either and notwithstanding, God, it's a long sentence, and notwithstanding the fact that no state of emergency in actuality exists is grossly disproportionate to the aims of the Minister. Okay, so they're, they're basically saying that you can only really restrict people's right of movement in an emergency situation. These right. draconian, regressive and unnecessary measures have no role or function in addressing or mitigating the situation vis-a-vis -vis COVID-19 which the government has claimed as the basis for the contents of this legislation and places at a grave risk the liberty, safety and well-being of vulnerable people and others in doing so set back. Many of the gains have been made in recent decades in safeguarding the right of psychiatric patients for no ostensible purpose related to the present claim circumstances. So obviously Gem Gemma and John really believe in a liberal state uh, it seems they uh, want liberty safeguarded and they believe that uh, vulnerable people are going to suffer as a result of the COVID-19 regulations. They also make an interesting argument around uh, the landlord, uh, res sorry, the Residential and Tenancies Act 2004, where they say um, that this is actually repugnant to Article 40.3 of the Constitution. So they're saying that because residential tenancies uh, board can't operate at the moment that they're being um, denied their ability to adjudicate on those matters. So then they throw in some um, jargon around what an emergency under article 28.3.3 should be and they referred to the legislation as it stands as a police state akin to Nazi Germany. Heavy hitting. So the articles in the constitution specifically they claim the legislation um, and the regulations are in breach of was uh, article 40.3. Uh, the state guarantees in its laws to respect as far as practic practicable by its laws to defend and vindicate the personal rights of the citizens. Um, this was also made as regards unenumerated rights and um, Article 40.3 is also uh, what they used as an argument around the Residential Tenancies Act 
they use Article 40.2, the state shall in particular by its laws protect as best it may from unjust attack and in the case of injustice done, vindicate the life, person and good name and property rights of every person. No citizen shall be deprived of his personal liberty, save in due course, sorry, save in accordance with the law. The dwelling of every citizen is inviolable. The state guarantees liberty for the exercise of the following rights, subject, subject to public order and morality. The rights of the citizen to assemble uh, peace, peaceably, which is freedom of assembly. State recognises the family as the natural primary and fundamental unit of society, 44.2. Uh, freedom of religion, Article 45. The applicant submitted that the regulations uh, were unconstitutional um, because the Oireachtas had no power to legislate under 15.2.1. They also submitted that the provisions in the legislation were contrary to various articles of the ECHR and the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. Now, let's go on to what the respondent said. So obviously they said they were incorrect to have the legislation deemed unconstitutional. Um, judicial review proceedings should have been should not have been brought. It should have been plenary uh, proceedings. They also denied that COVID nineteen regulations were disproportionate, and they actually had an affidavit from the Department of Health. Department of Health for this. Uh, also interesting as well, uh, the state said that 28.3.3 um, didn't just mean war, it meant other emergencies uh, from time to time. Um, as regards 15.2.1, it was submitted the courts have repeatedly confirmed that the making of regulations under statute is pr constitutionally permissible. Point out the applicants have made no case that the regulations in question are more than giving effect to the principles and policies which were contained in the statute and that is our beloved City View case and that there is also no basis for them to submit around the ECHR or the Charter of Fundamental Rights. So the judge agreed that it shouldn't have been judicial review. He noted that the regulations were to halt the spread of COVID-19 and are designed to affect every person resident in the state. So the applicants therefore did have locus standi. The applicants maintain that restriction on movement and assembly are destructive of family life. The rights as to free movement of persons and assembly are to be considered in the context of the relevant articles that provide for such. I'm also satisfied the applicants are not entitled to rely upon Article 45, which sets out principles of social policy. These principles are not uh, cognizable by any court under any of the provisions of the Constitution as stated in the article, nor was any case made that any unenumerated constitutional right was breached. To make an arguable case that the restrictions and limitations of rights are disproportionate, it was necessary for the applicants to put on affidavit some facts which, if proven, could support such a view. Unfortunately, in making their case for leave, the applicants who have no medical or scientific qualifications or expertise relied upon their own unsubstantiated views, gave speeches, engaged in empty rhetoric and sought to draw a historic parallel with Nazi Germany, a parallel which is both absurd and offensive. Unsubstantiated opinion, speeches, empty rhetoric and a bogus historical parallel are not a substitute for facts. Woo! In my view, the applicants do not have standing to challenge the amendments to the Mental Health Act, which is clearly directed towards people in a defined category, similarly to the Residential Tenancies Act 2004. They did not claim that they were either landlords or tenants. Delegated legislation is permissible under the Constitution and no case was made by the applicants that the regulations were outside the principle and policies contained in the enabling statute. I accept the submission of the respondents that the ECHR is not directly effective and that measures cannot be invalidated on the basis that they are repugnant to it. I also uh, accept that the Charter of Fundamental Rights does not apply to domestic law. 
By reason of the foregoing, I am satisfied that the applicants were they to have standing have not made an ankable case. I will note though that Article 28.11 of the Constitution makes clear that the government remains in office until their successors have been appointed. Also, this is around um, the issue of um, passing legislation. The Taoiseach and other members of government should continue to carry on their duties. The fact that a number of members of the government who are in office at the date of the dissolution of the Dáil are no longer members of the Dáil does not affect this. It cannot be doubted that one of the duties of the government is to take steps to address health and economic issues that arise from COVID-19. Nor has a case been made that the Dáil and Shannon that considered and passed this legislation was not fully constituted. That was another one of their arguments. Another one of their arguments was the hearing in public, which is Article 34.1. Um, so the judge notes that because of social distancing, it is no longer permissible to have as many members of the public physically present in court as they used to be. It's always the case that for hearings of certain actions, not every member of the public who wished to attend court could do so. This is for physical restraint because of the size of the courtroom. In any case, most members of the general public acquire their knowledge through media. So he was satisfied that uh, not having the court case um, for this judicial review being held in public was not repugnant to Article 34.1. In conclusion, contrary to the assertions of the applicants, the making of the regulations by the Oireachtas is constitutionally permissible given the clear terms of the relevant articles in the constitution and the legal authorities um, that have been considered the applicants have no made no arguable case against the notice parties which is the Oireachtas the case which they sought to make against these parties is unstatable and I am refusing their application sorry the respondent was uh, uh, Ireland uh, uh, sorry it was the Minister for Health uh, Ireland and the Attorney General and the notice party was um, uh, the Oireachtas, the, the Shannad and the Ceann Corla. Sorry if I had said that wrong. So in conclusion, I think that was a rather excellent judgment um, to read. It was very interesting, very current. Um, I think it's interesting the arguments they made. I think if they had been either a landlord or tenant, they actually might have succeeded on the residential tenancies um, argument. I think it's interesting that an assertion has made that um, Article 34.1 and um, judgments being delivered in paper form or being heard through the media is enough for justice to be done in public. So I think you should all pick up on that. And the third thing is the locus standi. So um, they do have locus standi as regards the COVID regulation because it applies to every citizen and every, per sorry, not every citizen, every person present in this state, but they didn't have locus standi around the Mental Health Act or um, the Residential Tenancies Act. So I think that's an interesting thing to note. Um, and then costs then is a separate judgment and I believe uh, they were um, forced to pay costs on the back of this. Um, which is a separate judgment to the Judicial Review 1. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm Law Hero and thanks for watching.